It's Dinosaur George answering some of the questions I received from you through my website www.dinosaurgeorge.com. If you have questions about dinosaurs or prehistoric life, uh, visit the website. The page is called Ask Dinosaur George. There's a form that you can fill out. Most of the questions I get I answer through email. Uh, but I choose a few every now and then to do a video response. So if you send them to me, I can't promise you um, that they'll uh, make it to the, to the video, but, but I'll try. Okay, uh, let's start with a question I got from Connor Lewis. Uh, he's from Lexington, Kentucky. I know Connor as Raptor Lewis. So Raptor, uh, you had asked me about my thoughts about the KT boundary and perhaps what really occurred that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. That's a tough question, man, because the evidence first is 65 million years old, so it's difficult to be able to read that evidence and clearly understand what happened. The KT boundary, if you're not familiar with it, is a very distinctive mark in the Earth that clearly marks the difference between one time period and another. The letter K actually stands for the word Cretaceous. The reason why is because they, they didn't use the letter C because the letter C also is used in the word Cambrian. They thought that would be confusing. The letter T is for tertiary. So the KT boundary represents a line that separates the Cretaceous period from the tertiary. Something happened there. Uh, there's an anomaly there. There's a very high percentage of a mineral that's very rare and that's called iridium. And we don't understand how it got there. Most people I talk to, most paleontologists, and certainly people from NASA, believe that that is the evidence that an enormous asteroid struck the Earth. And it just so happens that down in the Yucatan Peninsula, they found evidence of an asteroid impact. I personally think that that was the catalyst that caused the extinction of dinosaurs. But we can't say for sure. I know it's hard to get exact answers from people in paleontology, but some questions just can't be uh, answered completely, and so this is one of them. I think an asteroid or an impact from something from outer space caused dramatic environmental changes, and I think that's what caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Uh, Nico from, I think it's uh, Tigard, or Tigard uh, Oregon. Uh, Nico, uh, you asked me what the most common dinosaur is that we find. First of all, let me tell you, I'm so excited that things are going well for you with your job at the zoo. I think it's so cool that you're working at the zoo anyway, uh, so I just wanted to give you a little shout out. But uh, you had asked what's the most common dinosaur, and you guessed it was hadrosaurs, and you're right. Hadrosaurs are the most common dinosaurs that we find, uh, at least here in North America, and more than likely probably the world. Hadrosaurs were sort of like deer are today. You would have seen them everywhere, and there's so many different varieties of hadrosaurs. Um, I think they, uh, uh, there was an estimate I saw once that suggested that those animals may have traveled in herds of up to 10,000 in a group. Can you imagine what that would be? 10,000 three and four and five ton hadrosaurs walking together. It must have been incredible. So yeah, I agree with you, Nico. I think that hadrosaurs um, are the most common dinosaurs found. Uh, I could be wrong, but I, I believe it's hadrosaurs. Okay, uh, Eric John from uh, Den Helder in the Netherlands. Um, Eric, you had asked me uh, if it was possible that dinosaurs like Stegosaurus and Gastonia needed a long time to be able to learn how to use their weapons. Um, that is a very interesting question, a very good question first, let me tell you. Um, Yes, I think that dinosaurs with defensive weapons, the ankylosaurs, the stegosaurs, uh, the ceratopsians, I believe that they needed time, like any other modern animal, to be able to know how to use those weapons. And so, in my opinion, I think that that demonstrates parental care. I don't think dinosaurs laid eggs and walked off and let the eggs hatch and hoped for the best. I just don't believe that. I think dinosaurs were much more uh, family-oriented than we may give them credit for. And I think more paleontologists are starting to agree with that. We used to put dinosaurs in this class of being mindless lizards, but we know that's not the case anymore. New evidence emerges every day that their brains were a little more sophisticated than lizards, and so I think their behavior was much more family-oriented. 
And so I think that the babies were defenseless at birth. Even if they were born with horns and spikes, it didn't make any difference. They didn't have the strength to use them and they didn't, they didn't know how to use them. So yes, I think that they had to learn. And that means to me that parents are taking care of those babies until they're big enough to fend for themselves. That's a, that's a great question. And by the way, I've never been to the Netherlands, but uh, I'd love to go. So thanks for writing to me from there. Uh, Oliver from Pittsburgh, here in the good old U.S. of A, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, emailed me and said, how many teeth does a velociraptor have? Well, Oliver, that's a great question. The answer is, it depends. Um, look at this Deinonychus. This is the skull of a Deinonychus. Now, Deinonychus is a cousin of Velociraptor. He's a little bit bigger, but here's why I can't tell you how many teeth a Velociraptor has. Raptors, like all predatory dinosaurs, had teeth that would re replace themselves throughout their entire life. While they were feeding, they could break a tooth, and so that means at some points in time, there were gaps where teeth should go. Um, how many teeth should he have at one time if his mouth was filled? If I remember correctly, I think it's around, it's between 40, 40 and 50, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. I don't have a Velociraptor skull in front of me, so I can't physically count for you. But I can tell you this, if you looked at the mouth of a raptor, like Deinonychus, for instance, you would notice that there's places where there are no teeth. Again, that's because those teeth can be broken during feeding or fighting, or they fell out naturally. What would be cool if you were a raptor is the tooth fairy would have to come to your house all the time because your teeth, like a shark, would be growing in and falling out. Okay, well, last question. This one comes from Roger from, I believe it's pronounced Lily France, a, a city in France, Lily, L-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing these names. Uh, Roger, you had said you were a French student and that you had seen Jurassic Fight Club, our show on uh, the History Channel, and you saw the part about the bear. And I said uh, Arctotus simus was the largest predatory bear in North America. But you questioned that. You said that you've been studying and there's another bear called Ursus Maritimius Tyrannus? Um, I have never heard of that bear, but according to you, it's big. So I tell you what I did, I went online and researched it and found out, you're right man, that bear's measurements are estimated to be even bigger than Arctotus sinus. Now, in North America, I don't know if the bear you, you mentioned, uh, if, if this monstrosity uh, is a uh, Ursus Tyrannus. I don't think Ursus Tyrannus lived in North America. I don't think it did. Um, it's a big subspecies of a polar bear and it's gigantic. So in the show, I think I said that um, Arctotus simus was the biggest bear in North America, but I don't know if I said it's the biggest in the world. But if I did, you, my friend, are correct. You corrected the error. It's not the biggest. According to what I saw online and according to your email, uh, it sure seems like uh, uh, you're right, it was bigger. Well, I hope uh, some of you have watched Jurassic Fight Club. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's being shown worldwide now, so that's why I'm getting these emails from all over the world. Come to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Make sure when you're there, sign up for our free monthly newsletter. It's completely free. I do not share your email address with anybody. Um, so it's really cool. You get to read some great information. Uh, it's, a great, uh, it's a great newsletter. Uh, also go to the website and sign up. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer, send it to me. I answer questions from kids as young as two and three to people uh, in their late 80s. Uh, don't hesitate. Uh, it's been great. I, I hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little something. Write me, and uh, thank you so much. Have a good day. We'll see you.